and welcome to another Maggie's homebrew video. So today I'm actually brewing for the first time um, this one. So it's Festival Premium Ales Bonfire Toffee Stout. Got this from um, Brew Day Supplies in Day Book in Nottingham. Um, so yeah, it uh, makes 17 litres. Uh, Bonfire Toffee Stout. You see, pours a deep black with a creamy off-white head. Aroma is a fantastic blend of dark berry fruits. And the beer, the taste, the beer is full-bodied, moorish and filling, and exhibits a fantastic treacle coffee and chocolate note that combines and is reminiscent of autumn days eating bonfire toffee, 6% ABV. Hopefully you can see me properly because um, it's very difficult in the kitchen with the light and everything's white. So, never opened it, so I have no idea what to expect. Um, oh, not a tin. I was expecting a tin, it's not a tin. So we've got priming sugar. 70 grams of priming sugar. We've got American oak chips. Ooh. That obviously gives the bonfire part. 15 grams of beer yeast. Stout, beer yeast. There's the instructions as well. Uh, tells you the equipment required and additional equipment and all that business. Um, a brewing belt or heat pad, non-essential. Well, if you've got a brewing belt or heat pad, it's probably a good thing to do. Read the instructions for you before you start. Clean and sterilize your fermenter lid and mixing pad. Right, you bound to clean it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Standard two times malt extract patches are not water to for five minutes to soften the extract. For the bonfire toffee, 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 add the oat chip straight away. So here's the, uh, like I say, I'd rather they do it like Bulldog Brews do, where they have it, you know, um, separately. Hey ho, you know, it is what it is. So that's what I'm not going to go bother it. I'm not going to bother with the um, warming it up route. Although we're cooking New Year's Day dinner, so um, I'm actually going to stand up on the part of the oven that's not on. But there's good heat coming through the oven, so that'll warm it up anyway. As you can see, just there. Let me show you. Look there, just there. So yeah, the oven's on, cooking lamb for, for the dinner, as you do. So we'll push that in like that. That's it. So fermented on the floor. I've already done the sterilising part of the deal. So, you know, we'll get this up. Got the trusty old fermenter. Uh, five fermentation buckets, but I only really use two of them. Um, the others I only use when I really need to, if I'm doing like, you know, other brews. So I put that in the top. There we go, that's that sorted. Um, put that over there out of the way. Yep. Yep, it's better. First things first, put them away, don't need them. Scissors. So, first things first, like it says, we'll chuck the oat chips in straight away. Um, got a best before date on a 09 2024. Doesn't mean a thing to me because I'm using them now. And that's only a best before. So, chuck these in straight away there. Like ground up, uh, ground up wood, really. Um, you can see on the camera, there you go. It just doesn't look like wood or not. Uh, yeah. 
got a lovely smell to it. So if you can see on the, uh, Jesus, it's wet. Yeah, you can just about see the darkness. It's imparting that bon bon uh, bonfire uh, aroma now. So we'll open the first one of these right at the top. Now I do think that you ought to warm them up before and don't do what I'm doing. Because it makes life easier if you wear them in the long run. Put that in there. Just gently open the top up. And, uh, there we go. So there's the bolt. You can just yeah, you can just about see that on camera. You'll see it as I pour it out anyway. And there you go, glue appears to come. Um, squish it out, there we go. What I would say is, if you're gonna do this yourself, is an hour before you do the broom, boil your kettle, get a bowl, uh, pour hot water into the bowl, push these into the bowl, and that will make life so, so much easier. I've literally just, just got this, grabbed this out of the shed where it's been a bit cold actually, and done it that way, but I hope, you know, and open it up and pour a bit of hot water in. Now that's going to, that's going to help it sort out the, the rest of it. The only problem is that we're not going to get, yeah that's it, I can open it all can not So there's one. So I'm going to get the old spatula that I'm using today and just go up and down and push that hot water and try and get all that um, malt extract, i.e. what makes the beer, so yeah, just do that. And it's certainly helping. Well, while that's doing that, I'll do number two. Like I say, why do you don't use um, what what they use on bulldog grooves, which is that it could, you know you, you've got you've got one bag, you've got a, an unscrewable lid. You know, you do the same thing, you warm it up before and, and you know, you go from there. And it's so much easier to get every last little bit of extract out. Um, but hey ho, companies do what they do. Um, now, I try and squeeze as much out as possible. Same with this one, open it up, open the bottom up again, and uh, pour some hot water in. So I'll get a bit closer with this one, and uh, that's it. Pour hot water in. One, you've got to be careful you don't scold yourself here. You know, it can be a bit tricky, especially if you haven't got that sorted out. I'm afraid to God, don't make any cock -ups. So that's one a lot. Two kettlefuls of hot water today will be sufficient. Um, like I say, that, that's ready for pouring now. So I'm gonna hold it like that. In fact, let me move this into the other bag. Again with this bag, and see one bag, one bag would be so much easier um, than this.
when you look at the the homebrew companies, Richie's are the ones who met this, so they're the ones who met the Simply brand as well. I'm not surprised if it's made all by the same people put in the UK. Oops. There's another little lesson, pour it down the bloody side. <laughs> Otherwise it splats up everywhere. So as you can see, it's starting to clear now. Starting. And pour the rest of the hot water into there. Because whilst, you know, I've got to put my second kettle on now, so it gets a bit nauseous. And now I'm gonna work this as well. Just go up and down. Try and get every last ounce of malt off the side. You know, it would have been so much easier to put this in hot water straight away. You know, always follow the instructions. But at least me doing it, you know, you can see what works and what doesn't work, of course. So I'm moving it around, trying to get all of that lovely mold texture at the top. Well, at least the majority of it off. Stir the bottom. Right. Swap that one back into there. As you can see, that now is looking a lot cleaner, so it just takes a bit of time. So as you can see, you know, you don't think I've been doing a group for 17 years, what do you think? No, he don't have it, does he? <laughs> My only thing is, I didn't know I thought it was tin, to be honest. So, um, live and learn here a little bit. And that one is nearly absolutely clean now. So, so clean the mess away while I'm working. Yeah. Try not to get moulds everywhere. Try. Sticky and it gets everywhere. I mean, these have got cracking range. My way to the counter for Look at the back, cracking range of brew kits Pilgrim, Pilgrim's Hope, Golden Stag Summer Ale, Old Suffolk Strong Ale, Landlord's Finest Bitter. So, some of them are obviously slightly clones of a big commercial brands. Razorback IPA, Pride of London Porter. I think we know where that one comes from. Father's Hook Best Bitter and Summer Glory Golden Ale. Made in Burton on Trent as well, richieproducts.co.uk. And on the back it tells you all the bump on the back. Uh, if I leave that there for a couple of minutes, minutes or so, you can actually pause and read that. So, yeah. Um, and then on the front, there you go. Again, pause, read it, see what you think. 
if it shows up on your TV, that is. Depends how big your TV is. So we're already at the 15 minute mark. Uh, this kit is only 17 litres, so remember that when you film it up. You don't want to go to 23 litres, otherwise you'll end up with uh, like a 4 percenter. I mean, that's up to you. Uh, obviously, more water, it will drop the percentage. Less water will bump the percentage a little bit. So that's the kettle side of things out of the way. On a, on a, um, obviously on a 23 litre pour brew, you would have two, I, I would do two and a half. Probably stick to the instructions better than me, but um, I've done so many of these. Well, had I known it was pouches, I probably would. Because that would have eliminated most of this mess in about, not all of it though. So, I don't think it eliminates all of this, this business of trying to get every last little bit off. So that is looking pretty damn clean now. Get, just get enough swirl. Put it in there. Right. And as you can see, that is clean now. A little bit on the outside, but you can't win them all. So get rid of this one. Into the bin. Next one. And there we are again. I'll just give this a bit of a go on the bottom. Sink so it doesn't contaminate the road. And there we go again, clean as you come. Right, so that's got rid of that part. Next part, stirring. As the wife says, I'm good at stirring. So obviously, we need to mix it up. Uh, until there's absolutely no resistance. There was a kit I did that I read one day where you put, they, they want you to put the, all the cold and hot water in and then start mixing it. But bloody hard real about this. The, the heat takes care of a lot of this for you. Um, yeah, why you mix it afterwards is, is beyond me. Helpful that this fermentation bucket has got the numbers on the side as well, because then you're not you're not guessing. Um, now, obviously, this is not a great time of the year. If you're in a cold house, um, you, can, you might be better off getting a belt. But again, cost of living crisis. You know, at this at this moment of brewing. Um, you know, pick the roomiest, warmest room in your house and brew in there. And as long as the room gets to about 20 degrees, it should be all right. Um, where it's not so warm, it's going to take longer to brew. I've noticed that with my other brew that I've got on at the moment, my Imperial Red, it's taking a, a bit of a, a bit longer to brew. Uh, something to note. Right. So it's done. So I'll, sh I'll show you. 